That press conference that I talked about in the first segment, that was actually attached to the All Out 4 pay-per-view, which took place yesterday. 16 matches. It was long. There was a lot of stuff on this show. Tony Khan talked about, man, you know, people have been hurt. We haven't had matches available for Rampage. I've had to do this and that with Dynamite. You didn't need 20 matches or 16 matches on this show. There were a ton of them. The Zero Hour pre-show got an addition of the Trios AAA mixed, or I'm sorry, the mixed uh, AAA tag titles. Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello defeated Ortiz and Ruby Soho. The only thing I will remember about this match is there was a spot where Soho was coming off Sammy Guevara's shoulders and she just landed right on her neck. Unfortunately, at some point in the match, I'm not sure if it was there or not, I would believe it, broke her nose. Just really, it was a rough go of things. Uh, I have not seen a, sorry, I haven't seen a Sammy and Tay. They're great together. I'm not sure I like any of these mixed tag matches so far with them. Uh, they eh, Not so good. FTW title hook defeated Angelo Parker with Matt Menard to retain the title. He was actually on the defense for a lot of this match. They gave Angelo Parker a little bit, but hook ended up getting the victory. Afterwards, he was laid out by Matt Menard. 2.0 went after him, and that's when Action Bronson, who was shown in the crowd, came out throwing around Angelo Parker and Matt Menard like he used to do to people that would jump on stage. He'd invite them on stage during the shows, and then he'd, like, you know, Death Valley driver them off of there. Call me crazy, since he's from Queens and Hook's from Queens. Arthur Ashe Stadium? Mm. He's got a little bit of actual wrestling training experience, Action Bronson does. And he's the biggest fan in the world up there with a lot of other celebrities that love wrestling. So as far as will this guy take this seriously? Yes. Yes, I believe that he will. All-Atlantic Championship, Pac, excuse me, Pac, Still the stuck after all these years of doing that. Pack defeated Kip Sabian to retain the title. Really not a, a whole lot going on with that. This was a great example of a match that didn't really need to be on the pay-per-view. Now, we have a pack orange cassidy situation coming up maybe they really wanted to get there quickly they had to do it on wednesday to start setting things up but this was one of those matches that you probably could have waited on and just went ahead and built up towards dynamite or even rampage coming up this week one match one could say should have been on the pay-per-view but i understand why it wasn't because it was a cold match there was no feud here and you know what if I had to sell people on wanting to pay money for my pay-per-view, I think I might put Eddie Kingston and Tomohiro Ishii in the main event spot on the pre-show to rile everybody up. They riled each other up. Suplexes, lariatos for days, and of course, chops aplenty. Ultimately, Eddie Kingston got the victory. They shook hands afterwards. Ishii pushed him away when it came time for Kingston to try to help him back to the locker room. A really impressive performance for Eddie Kingston. Something that after all of this drama that's been going on with him, after being suspended, after having all of these headaches that have taken place with him, many of them self-caused by his own admission, Eddie Kingston gets a match with Tomohiro Ishii. Probably a match he wanted a lot more than with Sammy Guevara. And he ends up having a banger, which leads into the pay-per-view. First match, casino ladder match. Wheeler Yuta, Dante Martin, Claudio Phoenix, Penta, Roosh, and Andrade. During the match, a bunch of guys in all black ran out and started attacking everybody. One went up to the top of the ladder to take the chip. He revealed himself to be Stokely Hathaway. Then everyone else pulls their masks off. There's Ethan Page. There's uh, W. Morrissey. There's the Gun Club. There's Lee Moriarty. This leads into the Joker's entrance, and we get the strains of the Rolling Stones' Sympathy for the Devil. I know Scorpions uh, for the final countdown, or sorry, Europe, they ask for a ton of money, so much that no one, even Tony Khan, would have been willing to spend that money for Brian Danielson. The Rolling Stones, I don't know if they're in that category or not, but I've always heard that they are. 
So however much money was paid for sympathy for the devil to be played, you knew it had to be a big deal. And out came a guy in a mask who seemed to have the same gait of MJF. And he walked down and he, he took the chip away from Stokely and he looked like he was going to take his mask off. And then he just flipped off the crowd and he left. But you knew something was obviously going on there. And I think at that point, people had a feeling that MJF was going to be back by the end of the night. It was then time for the finals of the AEW Trios Tag Team Title Tournament. The Elite defeated Hangman Adam Page in the Dark Order. Match went a little under 20 minutes. It's one of those things, if you don't like Hangman, or I'm sorry, if you don't like, oh, hey, throw Hangman into that mix now, but definitely if you don't like the style of Omega and the Young Bucks, you know, you probably have a beef with this match. Whether you like him or not, nobody can do, with the exception of maybe throwing Will Ospreay and Kota Ibushi into that mix, almost nobody can do what those guys do. Whether you like the style or not, they're excellent at it. The end came when Silver set Omega up for the buckshot. Omega got out of the way. Page smashed Silver, allowing Omega to get the victory. So the Elite are the very first trios champions. Jade Cargill defeated Athena in about four minutes. Might have been the best Jade Cargill's looked. It was kept short. They had a <laughs> devastating spot in the beginning. Athena outside the ring drop kicked Layla Gray into the barrier between uh, the the fans and the ramp, and she looked like she absolutely killed her. She went smashing into that. But Jade Cargill, dressed as She Hulk, got the victory. She looked fantastic, at least as far as the aesthetic goes. Like I said, the work in the ring getting a little bit better. They did a good job laying that match out. Got the victory over Athena. Six-man tag team match. Wardlow and FTR defeated Jay Lethal in the Motor City. Did I just say that? The Motor City Machine Guns. Shout out to the Mitten. Oops. Wardlow hit Lethal with a big headbutt. I didn't even mean to do that. I like Royce the 5'9", okay? I like Doughboy's cash out. I'm sorry. I apologize, Detroit. A big headbutt, a lariat, but he pulled the straps down. Uh, Wardlow did. Power Rom Symphony, that was that. Went about 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Went a little bit longer than I thought it was going to go, but there was a lot of talent in that match. Afterwards, Samoa Joe's music played. He ran out, took out Satnam Singh, and then all of the baby facers uh, cornered Sanjay uh, in the ring. Sanjay came out with a shirt mocking Dax Harwood's daughter and mocking Dax saying that he was going to fight like an eight-year-old girl and that was a bad idea because Dax's daughter was there and she ran down to the ring snapped his pencil in two Dax then hit him and his daughter put her foot on his chest and this is the referee counted three that was a really really cool moment I like that a lot and you know we're wondering why are Wardlow and FTR in this match there's a lot of things you could be doing with them but at the end of the day, I thought that was a cute moment. I'd like to see Sanjay Dutt start getting a little bit more serious, though. I mean, he's been such a cartoon character out there, and maybe the whole reason was because it was going to lead towards this thing with Dax. But I got to be honest, if he's going to continue to be a manager, whether it be on TV and AEW or only in ROH, I'd like to see him step it up a little bit. Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. People are complaining, whining, bitching, moaning about this. The only thing I'm going to complain about is it went five minutes, but the reality of the situation is Ricky Starks lost nothing. Powerhouse Hobbs was put over him at a distinct level. Okay, it doesn't mean that Ricky Starks is dropping down the list. He's right where he needs to be. It was about getting Powerhouse Hobbs up a little bit. Should it have had more time? Absolutely. Could it have been on Dynamite? Maybe. Should it have had more time on this show? Probably. But I can't talk about it anymore on this show because we need to go to break. Be back with the rest of the card, plus Clash at the Castle and Worlds Collide. Wrestling Observer Live. TV back here with your Wrestling Observer Live. I almost forgot for all the ASMR kids out there. You ready? That was for you. Bad news if you're traveling around in your car right now, listening to Sports Byline, hoping to hear some live scores out of Major League Baseball. If you're in Baltimore right now, you got a doubleheader with the Toronto Blue Jays where you could make up some games and finally get yourself into the final three for the American League wildcard race. Unfortunately, right now, bottom of the ace, you're losing four to two. Yankees up on Minnesota right now, five to two. Aaron Judge, 54th homer today. So that's the only baseball that is taking place before we get off the air here. 
I know that's got nothing to do with all of you that are listening for pro wrestling, so I'm going to get right back into the all-out results from last night. Swerve in our glory defeated the acclaimed to hold on to the AEW World Tag Team titles, and look, after his match, Kenny Omega, as they were going up the ramp, turned around to the, the camera and told everybody back in the locker room, see if you can beat that. Then FTR and Wardlow and Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns, they tried. And if you're a, more of a fan of that style, they succeeded. The reality is, though, you could take those two six-man tag team matches, put them up against Swerve and Our Glory and the Acclaimed, and you know what? Swerve and Our Glory and the Acclaimed was the tag team match of the night. The crowd was outstanding for this. They were dying to see the acclaim get the victory at the end to the point where they ended up booing swerve and keith lee out of the building at the end when swerve strickland got the victory he looked up with this big smile on his face it was fantastic i don't think the fans are going to continue to hate on swerve in our glory it was just one night but that's because they love the acclaim so much that's going to keep going for sure but a you know it was an interesting decision to put this match on this show but frankly i mean I'm so happy for those four guys for the crowd reaction that they got. And it was one of those matches, too, that it probably went on a little bit too long. There were probably a couple of superfluous kickouts, which doesn't make it a classic match unless you were there watching it. And then it was a classic match because everything that they did popped the people in the crowd. I got to be honest. Pop me sitting there at home. I thought it was excellent. Swerve in our glory. Get the victory. Hold on to the titles. Then it was time. And I tell you what, that was a lot. There were a lot of matches. There was a lot to ask for out of those fans at the Now Arena. They really did a good job, I thought, sticking with the interim AEW Women's Championship four-way. Tony Storm defeated Britt Baker, Hikaru Shida, and Jamie Hayter, who was over like rover like over like a million bucks Britt and jamie and, and jamie are, had problems at the end it looked like jamie was going to get the victory Britt ends up pulling her out of the ring that of course ticks her off ultimately tony storm got the victory a little bit of drama on the women's side of, th of things still in the locker room at least one could take it that way because at the post show storm commented on being the interim champion by saying quote I mean, it's not ideal, but Thunder Rosa says she's injured. Okay, so when she says she's not injured, she can come back and lose to me. And that'll be the end of that. They were just tag team partners on television. You can put Tony Storm in the camp of people um, that I believe would probably also fit maybe Jamie Hayter, who had her nose broken, and Britt Baker, who has taken every opportunity she she can on national TV to throw shade at Thunder Rosa. I bet you you can probably put them in one camp and, and maybe have Thunder Rosa in the other camp right now. But, uh, yeah, so we'll have to see what kind of comes from that. Christian Cage defeated Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Yep, got to say his whole name now, everybody. Christian came out for the match with his arm in a brace. In the storyline, his arm was injured when Jungle Boy slammed it into the steel steps a couple weeks ago on Dynamite. Thing is, he's actually hurt, and it could be significant, according to this morning's Wrestling Observer Radio. Match only went 33 seconds. Jungle Boy was attacked by Luchasaurus and choke slammed on the stage area. Luchasaurus then power bombed Jungle Boy through a table at ringside, right in front of his mother and sister. Once Jungle Boy was able to get to his feet, the match began. Christian speared him and then gave him the kill switch for the victory. So. That feud will continue, but it will continue by proxy because it will be Luchasaurus who, it should be noted in this entire deal with Jungle Boy and Christian, even though he seemed to turn on Christian, he never did anything diabolical to Christian who said that he loved Luchasaurus. So Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy will be the continuation of this feud, which I'm completely fine with because with the turtleneck, with the with the jacket on, and with that face, Christian looks like a, a TV villain. Like, I'm not saying a movie villain, but he is right off of, like, a TV drama. Like, he is perfect for that role. Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson. 
I thought this was great. I mean, this was just really great pro wrestling. Chris Jericho pulling it back to the past. The match went damn near 25 minutes. Uh, Jericho gets the victory over over Danielson. People will criticize Brian Danielson not getting enough victories or anything like that. I honestly think that stuff's really overblown. You know, if he's giving Daniel Garcia something, he's doing it for a reason. He's elevating him. He loses nothing. He loses to Chris Jericho here. What does he lose? He didn't lose a damn thing in this match. Jericho, low blow, ends up getting the victory. That's that. Afterwards, a little bit later on, Jericho ran into uh, Daniel Garcia in the back. Garcia was watching this match on a monitor. He was still a little upset with Jericho breaking out the chair that he wanted to beat uh, Brian Danielson with last week. Bottom line is this. Daniel Garcia's got a match against Wheeler Yuta for the ROH Pure title. That'll be coming up. Jericho appreciates Asian society will not be in his corner. Garcia's got to do it all on his own. Don't be surprised if Garcia actually does it all on his own and then leads to more headbutting with Chris Jericho coming down the line. Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro defeated the House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews. Last week when I was talking about Dynamite, I pointed out what Darby Allen pointed out in his interview, which was, hey, Brody King, hey, Buddy Matthews, where was Malachi? When you were choking me out, where was Malachi when you were doing your damage? You don't need that guy. And with all the the talk about Malachi Black, whether he's asked for his release or not, whether he is happy in AEW or not, whether he needs to take some time off for himself in his own mental state, whatever the situation is, after the match, Malachi Black looked around, he saluted the crowd, and he went back up the ramp. This is following him having missed blown in his own eyes by Sting and taking the fall to Darby Allen. So what does this mean? I guess we'll have to see. CM Punk defeated John Moxley in the main event of the show. A lot of heat match went nearly 20 minutes. A really, really, really good match. I, I, I thought it was at least. Afterwards, the lights went out. A phone recording of Tony Khan was then played, talking to someone. Tony is talking about eating his pride for the sake of the fans. He tells this mystery person they'd be in the casino ladder match, that they didn't have to sign an extension, and they'd be paid a bleeped out sum of money. A video from ROH then played of CM Punk talking about the devil's greatest trick, being that he made people believe that he didn't exist. And that brought out Maxwell Jacob Friedman who said he is the devil. He made the universal belt motion, said it's going to be coming home with him, and then flipped the crowd off. Huge response for MJF. He is back. There's concern about MJF being a babyface. I think once he gets on the microphone, that won't be an issue. But I also look at a team that's got the Gun Club and Lee Moriarty and a, a bunch of guys from the greater New York City area like Stokely Hathaway and, and W. Morrissey, and I ask myself, hmm, <laughs> hmm, when they go to Arthur Ashe, what is the response going to be? Probably going to be pretty big. When they're in Newark for the next uh, pay-per-view coming up in November for those two days, Probably going to get a hell of a response here. They may have, create, he may have created a monster with MJF, but then again, MJF is incredible on the microphone, and if anybody can turn the fans around on them, he probably could do it. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you <laughs> grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected as a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, yeah. It, let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex, right? No, a it's, suplex it's is a suplex <laughs> and not duplex. Oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant's battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, okay, no. Okay, all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. 
There must be two of them then. By protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. <laughs> yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this okay, far. Okay, fine. Read another one. Yeah, Everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? <laughs> I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny, you did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> go, to, go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the I cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.